y'all, and welcome to episode 70 of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. My name is Kay, and this is my channel where I chat about all of my knitting and crocheting. Today is Thursday, June 13th. It has been a while since I recorded. I'm going to guess three weeks. Had a little bit of an unplanned hiatus there. Just crazy busy. We're into summer break with the boys. They're out of school. If you hear any noise it is them you might be able to hear Wyatt laughing I could hear him laughing before I started recording he is upstairs playing a video game online with one of his friends from North Carolina his giggles are the best it cracks me up technology it can be the worst thing but it is also the best thing that he can keep in touch with his friends and still play games with them it's the best. So anyways, if you hear any noise, it is those boys doing whatever they're doing. So we have a lot to chat about today. I have a table full of project bags over here. So many works in progress, some finished objects to share with you guys, a new design that was recently released that I can't wait to share with you guys. There's a winner that we need to announce for the 8,000 subscriber giveaway that we did last episode. And also, I'm going to ask your guys' input on an idea that I have for the YouTube channel. So stay tuned for all of that. I hope you guys are ready to jump right in and chat about all of the things that have been getting knit around here because there's been a lot. <laughs> so first up, Ravelry Group information that's going on. Actually, backtrack. First, I should probably tell you where you can find me. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as The Crazy Sock Lady, and we do have a group for this podcast on Ravelry. If you head over to Ravelry, up at the top, hit the Groups tab, type Crazy Sock Lady Podcast in, it should pull it right up. If you don't feel like looking for me or the group, just right down here in the down bar on YouTube, hit that arrow. It's going to bring up the show notes, links to everywhere that you can find me, links to project pages links to shops that I talk about. Everything should be right down below. So now, Ravelry Group stuff that is going on, all the happenings right now. So we have two Swapless Swaps that are open. If you are new to the podcast and you're not familiar with the Swapless Swaps, what those are is there's a different yarn dyer every month. Rosalie is so sweet and she puts these on in the group for us and you get 10 40 yard minis from that yarn dyer that's listed for that month. You do not have to sign up for a certain amount of months. You can go in and do which months you fancy doing. The price for those vary depending on where they are shipping to. It's 35 to $45. Shipping is included in that price. Um, and it just depends on where, it, if it's going to, you know, here within the US, Canada, other international places. Um, but all of that is listed there in the group and I will directly link the two that are open right now down below. So the first one is a busy life. This one is coming up. It's closing on June 15th. Um, I know sometimes Rosalie will keep those open if the spots don't fill. She'll keep them open for just a bit longer. So I'm not positive that she will do that, but June 15th is when this one is set to close and we still have 33 spots left. So there are so many spots left in the A Busy Life Swapless Swap. So if you're interested, head over, take a look at that swap. Then we also have What the Flock, and this one is open until July 15th. There are 31 spots available in this one. So if you guys want some mini skeins, you get 10 40 yard minis. If you want some minis for your blankets, for swaps, any scrappy project that you're doing, head over and take They're a lot of fun to get to try out some new yarn dyers, maybe that you've never heard of and you get lots of minis. Who doesn't love minis? So head over and check those out if you're interested. And then we also have one knit along going on right now. This is the spring and summer sock cowl. This is for any socks that you knit or crochet and it is open until September 23rd. So it's going to run all summer long. Um, now for this one, the chatter thread and the FO thread are up now. The chatter thread does have the full list of rules, all of the information you need. There are some coupon codes listed in the chatter thread that have been sent my way to pass along to you guys for this knit along. So head over and check that out. And then I do have the list of prizes as well. Um, 
with this knit along if you use any of my designs which are under crazy sock lady designs on Ravelry you get a double entry so you can post that finished pair of socks twice if it's from any of my sock patterns and I did receive a prize that I wanted to share with you guys so Stephanie over at the rusted stitch sent us two shawl cuffs for prizes so here's the first one and if you don't remember these that you can cuff them around your shawl to kind of hold it closed. This is perfect for my impressionist because I never know how to wear it. Um, but you can tuck this around and keeps those ends together. Just kind of a nice accessory for your shawl. So here's the first shawl cuff. And then this one I love. Look how fun that is. that one could wrap around and have that side showing out have a little bling on your shawl super cute thank you so much Stephanie for sending these our way so this will be two more prizes for the spring and summer sock cow and I do have more prizes on the way if you are a designer or a maker and you're interested in donating to the sock knit along or any other anything else for the the podcast just send me an email a message and let me know all right now knitting. I'm so excited to jump into the knitting with you guys since it has been so long since I've got to sit down and talk to y'all. First, let's do some design talk because there has been a new sock pattern released since the last time that we chatted. And this one was a collaboration with Knit Crate. So I designed the sock pattern for their sock subscription box for June. And this is the whimsical sock. And I don't have the socks here. I did have to send them off to Knit Crate once I got the sample knit up and the pattern done so that they could take photos and all of that. But I will put some pictures up right here so that you guys can see these socks. So this is a cuff down pattern with cables going down the center of the front. The back is just in plain stockinette. And it was a super fun one to design. The They sent a mood board, sent the yarn, and I just felt like it was all very whimsical and... I thought these, this cable design would be perfect for what I was kind of feeling as I was looking through their mood board. So like I said, this was for their June sock subscription box. The last that I saw they had sold out of that box. So you can no longer purchase the box through Knit Crate for June, but the pattern itself is available on Ravelry now. So I will be sure to link it down below if you're interested in getting this pattern. If you do knit this up and you finish it before September 23rd, it does count as a double entry for the spring and summer sock cow. So head over and check it out if you guys are interested. And thank you so much to everybody that has already purchased the pattern itself. And for y'all that purchased the knit crate box, I hope that you guys will tag me in it when you get it, when you start knitting it up. I cannot wait to see that start to come to life with the box. Now let's talk about some finished objects. So I feel really bad because <laughs> the whimsical socks, I had to just pop some pictures in. And two of my finished objects I'm going to be popping pictures in as well because I don't have them here in this room to show you. So the first finished object you guys will have seen as a work in progress last episode. And these are the socks from my friend Stephanie. And I have already gifted these to her. I finished them right, it might have been the morning or the day before we did a little staycation with our families at the Wigwam Resort. So while we were there, I gifted those to her. Um, and these I did out of Knit Picks Felici in the Hopscotch colorway on US 1 2.25 millimeter needles, 64 stitches cast on. And I did the Rhinebeck Rumi's pattern, which is one of my patterns that is available on Ravelry. I just love how it works up in self-striping. It's such a fun pattern to do, an easy one to memorize. Um, I would definitely say it's a beginner friendly stitch pattern. It's nothing that's hard or difficult. And you'll notice that the heel is in gray. That was just some leftover yarn that I had from a cardigan that I had made quite a while back. So using up a little bit of stash there with that entire pair of socks, which is always good. And I think that's it for those. So yeah, I already gifted those to her. It was a super fun knit. She loves them. They fit great. And then next I finished my pavement sweater. So I thought about trying it on, but guys, yesterday, I don't know what the high is today. I'm guessing it's about the same as yesterday. Yesterday it was 112 degrees. 
in Phoenix. It is just so hot. In this room that I'm in right now, obviously I have the air conditioning on, but this room for some reason is the hottest room in the house. It does not get used that much because it stays so warm. I don't know. The air is on, the vent's open, but it stays so warm. It's a very small room. There's no ceiling fan. It just stays very warm. And sadly, this is my yarn room, so I feel like I'm not going to get to use it at all this summer, pretty much. But I'm recording in here today, and I have the lights on, the studio lights, so that's making it even warmer. So I'm not going to try this on today, is basically what I'm saying. But it is done. I have not blocked it yet, which I want to talk to you guys about in just a minute. My dilemma that I'm kind of feeling with blocking it at this moment. But anyways, the sweater. So this pattern is the Pavement Sweater by Vera Valimaki. And the yarn that I used is Dragon Horde yarn in the teacup colorway. I have wove these ends in. I just did not snip them. Typically I will weave them in, leave the ends hanging until after I block, and then I will snip them. But yes, it is on, I believe it's her lore base, is her fingering base in the teacup colorway. And I did a size medium. I'm going to stand back here so that I can show you guys. So I love, I have tried it on. I posted a picture on Instagram um, of me just, I tried it on over the tank top that I had on. But it fits so nice. I really think I have been doing my sweaters too big all along because every sweater it's just a little bit oversized. Um, I just love the way that this one fits. So I did alternate skeins throughout. I talked about that more on the last episode. I did like the helix knitting and alternated the skeins when I was working in the round um, that way. I tried, I think it was on the sleeve. I just started working and I thought I'm not going to alternate skeins and I got maybe six rows into the sleeve and I was like okay we're definitely taking this back and alternating it was very obvious um when I started because some of the skeins were a little bit lighter I mean you can definitely still tell a difference but it's fine I alternated throughout so that it wasn't too crazy noticeable and I'm very very happy with it so my dilemma with blocking, okay, let's double check and see if there's anything else. I think that was pretty much it. I followed the pattern exactly. I did not change anything about how it was knit up. And I would knit it again, for sure. Because the fit is amazing. Um, I'll pop that picture in of me just trying it on. It's not a finished object photo because it's still not blocked. It's. I just did a little selfie with it on, but... It really fits very well. So blocking this, going back to the weather here, it is just so hot. So I'm debating, do I want to block this right now or do I just want to store it and then block it when I'm actually going to be able to wear it? My thing, you know, what I'm thinking is if I block it now, by the time I'm actually able to put this on and wear it, Honestly, that might not be until Rhinebeck. October. It's June right now. Do I just want to put this aside and then block it before Rhinebeck and have a freshly blocked sweater ready to wear for Rhinebeck? I mean, it might be fine if I block it now. Store it nicely. Might still be good. But I'm thinking I might just wait. <laughs> and block it. Part of me right now does not want to block a sweater because it's just so stinking hot. So I don't know. Do you guys have that dilemma or do you just like immediately finish things and block them? I'm thinking I don't even feel like getting a finished object photo right now so I might just set it aside, block it before Rhinebeck. So I'm thinking that's probably what I'll do because it's just so, so warm right now. But that is my pavement sweater. I'm so happy that it's done. I have 
yarn caked up for my next garment to cast on. So we'll talk about that soon. Um, I would like to get it started fairly soon. I want to have a couple more sweaters done before Rhinebeck and I'm slacking here a little bit on the sweater knitting. So I would like to get it started this next week. That's the goal. By the next time I podcast, I want to have that on the needles and as a work in progress. So we will chat about that then. Okay. Oh, I have one more finished object. Another one that I don't have here. It's upstairs, but it's hanging up. So I crocheted Wyatt a net for his stuffed animals. He's wanted me to do this for a while. I had done one, it's probably for Austin years ago. And Wyatt's needed one. His stuffed animals have just been in a basket in his closet and it's overflowing and it's always a mess in there and it drives me bananas. Um, so I've needed to do it for a while. I finally just said, come in here and pick out this yarn. I'm gonna get it started. So I did it this last weekend when Eric and Austin, they were in Vegas for a basketball tournament for Austin. So Wyatt and I just kind of had a nice relaxing weekend, just the two of us. So I whipped that thing out in less than 24 hours. It was such a fast project. The pattern that I use is a free pattern on Ravelry and it is the how to make a net to hang stuffed animals. That's the name of the pattern <laughs> by Cindy Kraminga. I'm probably butchering that last name, but I will link that down below for you guys. I'll link the project page, which will have the link to the pattern within it. Um, I did do a couple of changes to the pattern. Nothing major. I did a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook instead of what the pattern called for. I can't remember off the top of my head what it called for. And then I chained 151 stitches instead of the, I think they called for 100, a chain of 100 or 101. Um, but a lot of the comments on the pattern said that it was not big enough. And I thought, okay, the amount of stuffed animals that he has, it needs to be big. So I thought going up a hook size, chaining more would kind of fix that issue of needing a larger one. And it did. If it's all of his stuffed animals, I will pop a picture in here for you guys to see all of his stuffed animals hanging out. Um, it was funny. As soon as we put it up, Calvin was very interested. And I thought that's going to come off the wall. It's not going to last very long. Calvin's going to be up there and it's just going to fall right down but it's still up. It's up. We're good for now anyways. Um, so, okay. I think that was it. Oh, I used worsted weight, just some knit picks. It was actually two different kinds in the picture. It just looks navy blue, but actually the back where it's in the corner is a gray. So I used all of that blue that I had. It was like one and a half skeins of their probably have it right here actually instead of guessing hmm, was this no might have been this this is their comfy worsted I thought it was out of their merino but I think it was actually out of this so I whatever I put on Instagram was wrong I'm pretty sure it was out of this this is their 75% Pima cotton, 25% acrylic. Their Knit Picks Comfy Worsted. I am almost positive this is what it was out of. I don't remember what the colorway name was. They were just leftover skeins that I had from other projects. I really think it was out of this. Hmm. I'm pretty sure it was. And then the silver I have right here. And it was just the Knit Picks Brava Worsted. I think the label got thrown away, but it was the Bravo Worsted, which is 100% premium acrylic. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it was out of. I was thinking it was out of like their Merino Worsted or something. I don't know, but pretty sure it was that cotton. I had some of that left from something, I think. Um, but okay. Yes. So that was the stuffed animal net. Oh, I, I have two other finished objects. 
I'm looking over there and I totally forgot about them. I'm going to grab them really quick. And I actually, I have these finished objects and I have two more, but they're designs. So I'm not going to show them just yet. One is a new sock design that I just need to get pictures of it and then it is ready to go. Um, the other one is a cowl design that I'm going to be needing testers for very soon. It's done. I just need to, again, get pictures. And then that one, um, I still need to get testers for. So keep an eye out for that. I'm thinking what I might do testers. I've been trying to find the least stressful way to get testers. I had, you know, a link where you could sign up and I would email you and that became overwhelming and stressful for me for some reason, the way that I was doing it just was not working for me. Um, so typically I just ask on Instagram for testers. I'm thinking this next time I might post on Instagram when I need testers and have a link to a Ravelry thread for people to sign up. I think that's what I might do. Okay, but anyways, the next two finished objects are a new design, but it is not out yet on Ravelry for purchase. It will be probably the end of July beginning of August. Right now, so I designed this um, for a kit that my friend Susan of Desert Vista Dye Works put together for people to pre-order that are going to SSK, um, that retreat in July. So it is only available if you purchase that kit and you can only purchase the kit if you are going to SSK. Anyways, the pattern. So I actually haven't named this pattern yet. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna name it. That's just been a dilemma. But I have two socks knit up in this pattern. And I love it so much. So I think this colorway is called Nashville at Night, and this one is Boot Scootin'. And um, because the retreat is in Nashville, that this is for. So much fun. I love these colorways. I love the pattern. So I was trying to think of a name since it's Nashville country music boot scootin' was this one I just thought line dancing so I was trying to think of a name with line dancing if you guys have any ideas let me know below but I haven't been able to think of one yet so the pattern is only on the front of the sock as you can see the back is in plain stockinette and then there's the front you on this one too. So I knit this up in both yarns that are available in that kit. Um, I feel kind of bad showing you guys since you know not all of us are going to SSK. I'm not going. Um, but I wanted to show you guys the pattern and let you know I know I've had some questions and Susan said she's had some questions as well on if this pattern will be available for purchase outside of the kits and it will be just not until SSK is over. It's exclusive to those kits and the people going to SSK until that's over and then it will be listed um, on Ravelry for, for the general public to purchase. But super fun. I had a lot of fun doing this. Let me know if you have any line dance pattern names. <laughs> that would work for this. Okay, now I feel like I have a million works in progress <laughs> to share with you guys. So let's jump right in. First, I don't think you guys have seen this work in progress on the podcast. I know I've posted on Instagram, but I've been working on a pair of um, vanilla socks. I have one done. So this is the first one. And this yarn is a total mystery. It's been balled up for quite a while. Um, and I have no idea where the tag is. None. It's definitely an opal or a regia. Something along those lines. I can tell just by the feel of the yarn. Um, but I love how it's pulling. I wish I could find the tag for it. I'm sorry, but I have no idea where it is. 
So the first one is done. And the second one is a work in progress. This is in this, a bag from the Scrappy Thread. And I have, I think I, did I start the heel? Yes. I have the heel started. I'm halfway through the heel flap, I believe, on the second one. So I worked these up Magic Loop on US1 2.25 millimeter Chow Gu needles. I cast on 64 stitches, did about 20 rows for the cuff, and I think 57 rows for the leg, rounds for the leg. So it's going right along. Here's what it looks like in the ball. I just have no idea. I think the tag got lost in the move. I'm pretty sure. I cannot find it anywhere. I think it was balled up when we moved from North Carolina to here, I think, and I'm pretty sure it got lost. So I don't know what the colorway is, but I cast this on so that I would have some movie knitting when we went. Eric and I took Wyatt to see Aladdin. So I cast that on, did the cuff, and then I basically did the entire leg during the movie. And then the second one, I worked on the leg during Secret Life of Pets. We've seen more movies than we normally do here recently. It's been fun. And okay, next work in progress is one. This has been, the yarn has been caked up in this bag. This is a bag from Bags by Awesome Granny. Super fun bag. This has been sitting with the patterns been in it, yarns caked up, at least a year. That is so ridiculous. It's been sitting for at least a year. I bought this yarn at India Untangled the year before last, um, India Untangled in Rhinebeck, Rhinebeck weekend. So this is the Oracle Shawl by Kristen of Vine. I think I have a picture, but it's in black and white so yeah it's been ready to go I've been dying to cast it on the whole time I just haven't cast it on for whatever reason so the yarn let me show you the yarn before I show you where I'm at so here's Kristen's tag everybody knows wool and vine I'm sure so my collar A, there are three collars in this shawl. My collar A is Coven. Collar B is Grim. And collar C is Paranormal. So there's my three collars. And I'm pretty sure this is just the exact colors that Kristen used in her sample because I loved them so much. So I was on a mission to get them when I was at Indie Untangled. And I've actually, I feel like I've gotten a good bit done on this. I can't remember without looking at the pattern exactly what section I'm on within the pattern, but here it is. So it is a full pie shawl. It's a little bit, the needles, the cord's a little crazy, but there it is so far. How fun is this pattern? I am obsessed with it so far. So I started out, you do, I won't give anything away on the pattern because it is a paid for, but the cast on that you do, I've never done in knitting before. It was a lot of fun to do that and do it new. And I've always wanted to do a full pie shawl. I just never have. So this is ticking so many boxes for things that I've wanted to try, new things for me. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I'm loving the lace. I'm loving the bit of brioche. My neck section is another brioche section. So I'm excited to get it started. I haven't started it yet because I do need a little bit more brain space <laughs> for this one. Um, it's a good one when you feel like you want to sit and concentrate on something that's not too overly hard, but you do have to concentrate a bit on. So for this one, I'm using Knitter's Pride Zing Needles, US 6, four millimeter. And I started it out doing Magic Loop. So since it's all in the round, you can either start out with deep pins or Magic Loop. 
I just wasn't feeling DPNs that evening. So I just started out magic looping it. And then as it's gotten bigger, I've put it right now, I think it's on, I think this is a 40 inch cable. I can't wait to sit down and get the next section started on it. I just texted Eric and told him that I am melting in this room. I really wonder if there's even air coming out of that vent. It is so hot in here. Oh my goodness. Okay. We're gonna keep pushing on through. We're gonna get through it. I got some ice water, so let's keep on going. Okay, the next one is another pair of vanilla socks that really haven't gotten much work, but I thought I would go ahead and show you guys. So I have this in this adorable tiny little sock bag, or I guess you could put a hat in it probably too, but I use it for socks. From Robin, it's Stitch in Pink. There's her logo on the inside. It is adorable. Little cats, cutest little drawstring bag. So I really do not have that much done on these at all. The yarn I'm using was gifted to me from Amy over at Little Tailoress or um, Dandelion and Dogwood. It's her shop name. And it's called Wanna Cook. And I had started a pair of socks and then ripped them out. So the cake looks a little funny. But the colorway name is called Wanna Cook. And she gifted this to me when I was obsessively watching Breaking Bad. Um, so I love it so much. And here is my progress so far. That's it. That, that's all I've got so far. Yep, that's it. So I decided to do a rolled cuff on this one. Um, I don't know, I just thought it would be fun. I've done the Rose City Rollers before, so I didn't pull out the pattern and go exactly by this. I think I just knit like 20 rounds and thought, yep, yeah, okay, that looks good. Let's go with that. <laughs> so that's where I'm at right now. I'm ready to start the heel. So I just haven't picked these up yet because I'm just at that point where I need to sit down and, and do the heel flap and get the heel finished. So I just have some vanilla knitting on the toe or the foot, not the toe, the foot. Oh, the needles that I'm using for that. Um, Knitter's Pride Zing DPNs and US1 2.25 millimeter needle, 64 stitches. All right, last work in progress is again, one that I'm not very far on. So there's not too much to see, but I have it in this fun bag from Sandy of By the Lakeside. And this is a new design. So the yarn that I'm using was sent to me. It is Mint Rain Hand Dyed Yarns. And the colorway is New Growth. And it is on their Tough Sock base, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. And I showed this to you guys when I got it. It was a couple episodes ago, I think. So it's a fun green. And I have just been so inspired by this color, by the name New Growth in this time of year, spring and summer. So I'm having a lot of fun. I had so much fun writing up. I've got the chart ready to go. Something funny. I'll show you guys a little. You can't see too much. It's a little blown out, but I have my graph paper in here that has my notes for the pattern so that I can get it going. Make sure it's going to work before I take the time to sit down at the computer and put in the work doing it on the computer and and all of that stuff that's typically how i do it um i have had some people say they would like me to share more of my design process which i don't typically talk about a lot um but that is one thing that i do i start out every single design paper and pencil i just love something about that makes me inspired sitting down with some graph paper, notebook paper, a pencil, writing out ideas, charting them out by hand. Um, I just love that aspect of designing. And then I make sure it's gonna work. And then I go to the computer and put the work in there on getting everything actually, you know, on a graph on there, ready to go into a pattern. 
So yeah, right now it's just a bunch of scribbles that probably only I could decipher. <laughs> so here is all I've gotten on that. I started this this morning, actually. Yesterday I sat down and, you know, figured out the, the design ideas that I had, put them into something that I think will work, and I got it started. So I just have a little bit of the cuff done this morning while I was um, having some coffee and working on show notes, I cast this on. And yes, you are seeing correctly, it is on nine inch circulars. I don't really know why, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so I went through a phase where I, I worked with nine inch circulars a good bit, and then I kind of fell out of love with them and I wasn't really loving them that much. And this morning I just felt like that's what I wanted to do this on. So I pulled out my Chow Goo Red Lace 9 inch circulars. And here we are. And I'm not really hating it that much right now. So I'm going to give it a go and see if I like them again because I just love the idea of them. I, and they're just so cute. I've just, they make this thumb hurt for some reason. It's obviously the way I'm holding them. They make my right thumb hurt. And I was having an issue, which I did figure this out. So I will share it with you guys if anybody else has had this issue with nine inch circulars. So I always use a US one 2.25 millimeter for my socks, always. That's what I was using with nine inch circulars. But then I was having the problem that my gauge changed for some reason when I'm using the nine inch circulars in the round, my gauge was looser and my socks weren't fitting as well. So it kind of made me not want to work with them. But going down to, this is a US zero, a 2.0 millimeter nine inch circular. And that fixed the gauge issues. Now my gauge is the same with the nine inch circulars. Um, once I did that, once I made that change, um, it's the same as when I do it magic loop or DPNs. I get the same gauge. So I just had to go down a needle size to fix that. I don't know what it was, just my gauge is different in the round, I guess, using just a circular as opposed to like Magic Loop or DPNs. But it works. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see if I fall in love with them again or if I'm just still not in love with them. Right now it has not been bad. And I have um, some needle stoppers on here from Coco Knits. I love these needle stoppers. So that's probably what I will work on today when I get some down time to sit and knit. I will probably continue on with that design. I'm anxious to see if the idea that I charted out will actually come to life and work. So last episode, we did a giveaway. I announced a giveaway for 8,000 subscribers. And it was this fun prize package here. And there were so many comments. Thank you guys so much for all of your sweet comments. I did read every single comment that you guys left. So I sat down this morning and I did random number generator and I counted through all of the comments to the winning number. And the winner is Marsha Smith. So congratulations, Marsha. If you will go right down below in the down bars, my email, and you can send me your full name and your mailing address to the podcast email. And I will get that shipped out to you. Thank you guys so much to everybody that entered. Thank you guys for watching, for subscribing. I really, I love you guys so much and it means so much to me that y'all continue to come back and watch. Um, and I have an idea for something I want to do on the YouTube channel and I wanna get your feedback. So I get a lot of questions about how I knit my socks, um, tips or tricks that I have for socks, is there a tutorial I can recommend? Do I have tutorials? So I'm thinking, are sock knitting tutorials something that you guys would be interested in seeing? There's a jet going over right now. I don't know how loud that is for you guys. Um, is that something you would be interested in seeing? Say like a tutorial on how to knit socks with Magic Loop, how to knit socks with DPNs, 
something along those lines. Um, let me know below your input on that. I've always kind of felt like there are so many other tutorials out there. What would I have to offer that is different? But I, I still get so many questions about it. So thinking maybe that might be something that would be fun to do. So, you know, I can share how I knit my socks with Magic Loop, how I knit my socks with DPNs. Um, I don't know. Let me know if you guys would be interested in that. If there is enough interest, I could see myself, you know, that would be something that I would put in, put the time in for you guys to get that tutorial or tutorials out there. So let me know below if you would be interested in sock knitting tutorials. And I think that might wrap it up for today. There really isn't a ton of chatter. Like I said, we're just, it's summer break. Um, Eric and Austin went to Vegas for a basketball tournament and they had a great trip. I thought, you know, that'll be fun bonding time for them to get to go together. And I, I stayed here and Wyatt and I took care of all of the animals, <laughs> the dogs and the cats. So we just had a fun weekend together. He had fencing camp, Wyatt did all of last week. So every morning, it was about 20 minutes away from our house. Um, so it was, I could have came back every morning, but what I decided to do was to take that time every morning, the three hours that he was at fencing camp. And I went and I sat at a coffee shop and I just got so much work done. I got caught up on a ton of like administrative stuff a ton of work knitting done for designs. It was great. And I told Eric, um, I think once school starts back up, that is something that I will do one morning out of the week. Just take my work, whatever, if it, whether it's administrative stuff, like, you know, bookkeeping type stuff or answering emails or actual knitting, I will take that, take it out of the house, go to Starbucks, wherever, and just sit and get like two, three hours of work done out of the house. Because it made, which of course, that week it was Monday through Friday, every day I was out of the house in the morning. But I think even one morning a week would make a difference. To get out of the house, because I'm always at home doing work. So, there's always the distractions around the house. This could be cleaned right now, or this laundry could be done right now. There's always something that can be done around the house, always. So yeah, it was nice to be away from those distractions. And I, in a way, it was kind of like a little bit of self-care, I think, that even though I was still working, I was still doing something. I was just not stressing myself out with all of the things that need done. I was able to just take some time and focus on that. So I really think when school starts back up, that's something that I'm going to start doing once a week. I think it'll be good. But yeah, I, I really think that is it. I'm going to get out of this hot room. I'm really, the air is on right now and I feel nothing coming out of the vent. I really think there's just no air coming out of that vent. It's open but I feel no air right now, none. So I think something's not working properly with this vent in this room. This is the only room that gets like this. It's miserable. So I'm gonna go probably sit in front of a fan somewhere and cool down a little bit. <laughs> but I hope that you guys enjoyed the episode today. It's definitely longer than they have been, but it's been three weeks and I, so wanted to catch up with you guys and feel like I fully got to catch up with you guys and share everything that I have been working on. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that and I'm going to try not to go three weeks before I podcast again. So hopefully I'll see you guys again in a week or two and until then, happy knitting. Bye.